Okay, so it's November 30th. Um, we're about a day and a half out from probably what looks like to be one of the bigger swells for Hawaii that we've had in two winters. Um, so I'm pretty excited, but just thought I'd let you know the frantic kind of information collecting that I do before a swell to create a game plan and kind of have an idea of what spots are gonna be good, what to expect and what to be prepared for. Um, and a lot of it has to do with looking at different sites. Over time, I found that different websites and forecast models um, work better for particular aspects, whether it be wind forecast, um, wind timing, if it, the wind will be changing, um, swell height, swell timing, things like that. So this is just kind of my go-to's at any one of these websites. You can kind of get like the full menu, but this is how I try to figure out what's coming. Um, so first off, I'm here at Storm Surf. I like using their wave height model. And so this gets updated every 12 hours. You always want to pay attention to when these uh, updates have happened and when they're coming. So this is zero hours. Um, so this is previous because they haven't hit a new update yet. But this is what's happening right now in the North Pacific Ocean. And this color gradient you can see on the key below is in feet. So that this is feet of swell height. You can hit other models that'll give you a color gradient that's just specifically for wind, but I'm going by swell height. And you can see the storm is super powerful because it's basically bottom, bottoming out the chart. So that's 48 to 50 foot seas at the center of that storm. And it did hit yellow, like completely bottom out the wave height chart at one point. So it's looking really solid and I'm trying to, I use this to kind of get a feel of the direction that the swell is going to be hitting. Are we going to get the full brunt or is it going to swoop away towards the west coast? And you can hit the animation. And so remember when you're hitting this animation, it's, it's showing you projections into the future. As you can see, we get the tail end of that. If it was aimed straight at us, it'd be like one of the biggest swells ever. And then we got another one coming behind it. And you can also see here, all that energy is going towards the west coast. So Mavericks is going to be going off, but it's a nightmare to travel right now with all the COVID stuff. So I am going to stay home on Oahu. Then I bump over to Surfline and I look at their forecast, which they had just updated. They had not updated it last night. So Wednesday the 2nd is go time. We're on Monday right now. You can see they break down the different swells that are going to be in the water. And this is when the primary swell really comes up. And I look at it. How you can tell when the, a big swell is filling in is you really look at the interval. When the, the long interval hits, that's when the swell is going to start showing its face. Even though this is 2.3 feet, it's at 22 seconds, which means it's the forerunners of the swell that's going to build into the following day. And Surfline's saying we got a midday peak, which is absolutely ideal. Um, so I'm going to take that one to the bank and then I go over to Winguru. So Winguru, I picked a, a location, um, on the North shore. I picked backyards just because backyards is catches more wind than most places on the North shore. So it's going to give me a higher, um, wind forecast, I'd say, as opposed to the places you'll surf. Um, and they're saying 14 to 18 foot of swell. At okay, we have period so no 11 feet at 20 seconds. This also has it coming in, but it's saying it's coming earlier. This this site's saying 8 a.m. Tuesday morning. You see the beginning of the long interval. So those are the dis discrepancies that we're um, I'm trying to figure out by looking at different sites. So swells have been showing up earlier than Surfline's forecast this winter so far. So I'm going to go ahead and assume. Since they're claiming this is going to start filling in on Tuesday earlier, that that's going to be the case now. Um, but main thing I'm looking at with them is wind. And the wind is all day long, no more than nine knots gusting east and even a little east-southeast midday. So that's like as good as it gets wind. The only thing that I'm worried about is if the wind's too light. Um, you get that convection of the, the land heating up. And that sucks in wind off the ocean, which creates an onshore sea breeze. When the waves are really big, they're traveling at like 
25 knots, so they, the swells actually create their own wind. So even on days where you get a light sea breeze and it's a little onshore, the wave's moving so fast that it creates its own wind up the face, and it's usually okay. And then I'm going to go to the NOAA Hawaii forecast and uh, Pat Caldwell's breakdown here. He, so he last updated on the 27th at 3.13 p.m., which means he should be updating this uh, around 3 p.m. today. So this is kind of like an aged forecast. But we can still look back and say, okay, Wednesday the 2nd, he is claiming heights of 35 to 45 foot faces. So that is awesome. That's, that's some big surf. And besides these websites, I kind of cycle through. You know, I'm talking to the forecasters themselves to try to get the early information before it gets put through the filter of their algorithms. Um, uh, other things that you're trying to pay attention to is if one of the satellites is down and is not giving data. So the algorithms will continue to work even with partial information. So if, for instance, one of the satellites isn't bouncing back information and that's a satellite that's actually passing over the storm in the North Pacific, you're not going to get an accurate read. So you're going to have to look to, to other means to, to kind of get an idea with less puzzle pieces. Um, and then also just talking to my, all my friends that I'm going to be coordinating with, um, with having a surf session and also the safety aspect of it. So we're all kind of trading knowledge. It's funny because I started geeking out on stocks and it's super similar to that. Like you go to different sites and get different people's takes and kind of try to make a, a, a general average of all of them, but you know which ones are stronger for different aspects. And then you go get the word on the street. So um, that's the process. It's like leading up to a swell like this, I'm gonna be checking all of this stuff every hour pretty much through the day. That's how you know it's like a serious mental disorder because I know it's not updated yet, but I'll still check it. <laughs> but exciting stuff. I hope this helped you um, forecast some amazing sessions in the future for yourselves. I'll put these website links in the description under this video if you want to check it out and start playing around. Um, the more you are on these things and just see what the outcome is of the swell based on what you've seen it leading up on these websites, the more you're going to get a feel of how these particular websites work for the area that you're in, what their strengths and weaknesses are. So play around with it, click those links in the description, and uh, enjoy. Hope this gets you some uh, good quality time in the water.